Well, good Sunday morning. It's an exciting time for us at Plaid because this is our very first morning where we're going to have our morning services. All right, starting at 1030 today. So if you haven't gotten yourself up and around and ready to go to church, get yourself dressed and get down here and worship with us. Alrighty, and people have asked me, are you not going to have the evening service? No, we're going to be doing both. It's going to be a little taxing for us, we understand that, but God has really, really shown us that we need to do both. So we will be live at 5, and of course we will be uh, uh, live at 10.30 for our morning service. We'll have the children's programs in the morning, we'll be all set up, so I hope you can make it and join us. And always remember, you can always see us on, on YouTube or Facebook if for some reason you can't make it. All right? Okay, so yesterday we saw Paul's letter, and he was sharing about confrontation can be a good thing. And, and, that, and it was in this case. If it's done the right manner and it leads those to Christ and a walk of righteousness. So uh, as we finish chapter 7, Paul continues to let them know how joyful he is, all right? How proud he is of their response and their spiritual walk. So he's patting them on the back big time. So have your pens ready, your, your uh, papers, your Bibles, your journals, whatever you're using. And we're going to pick up on 2 Corinthians chapter 7, starting in verse 13. It says this, Therefore we have been comforted in your comfort. And we rejoiced exceedingly more for the joy of Titus, because his spirit has been refreshed by you all. For if anything I have boasted to him about you, I am not ashamed. But as we spoke all things to you in truth, even so our boasting to Titus was found true. And his affections are greater for you as he remembers the obedience of all how with fear and trembling you received him. Therefore, I rejoice that I have confidence in you and everything. So what we see is this. So we can get an idea of what Paul's talking about, and so we can relate to it, okay? He sends Titus with the previous letter, all right? He sends him back with that previous letter, that letter that, that and, and, and some other of the, the apostles or some other of the disciples, some other so that went with Titus, and, and he sent it, and, and really remember that letter was, we don't know what it said, but it was not the best of letters, all right, as far as uh, it, it had a lot of uh, uh, information that they, that they needed that they probably would not be, was not real positive to them, all right? But Titus not only uh, takes the letter, but he reports back how well it was received. He reports back that even though it was a very difficult letter, that uh, that uh, it was a and it was a letter of correction that he comes back filled with joy, talking about the the church of Corinth and how they responded to this letter, this letter of correction. Alrighty, uh, that uh, they they handled it as mature Christians and they had a mature Christian response. And Titus came back uh, uh, with even more fondness of them than what he had before. He felt so uh, welcome and, and so appreciated when he had come there. All right. And because of their response and the way they handled this letter, it encouraged him and it encouraged Titus. And in turn, because it encouraged Titus, when he got back to Paul, it encouraged Paul. So Paul is celebrating, all right? And, uh, uh, and, and he was talking about who they, they, they had become more and more like Christ, that they were maturing as Christians. And I get that, by the way. I really, really get that. You know, I see people in plaid growing all the time. My goodness, I, we have so many people in plaid that were either unchurched or un, unsaved. And, and so we watch them grow all the time in Jesus. And, and, uh, and sometimes, sometimes there, we have to have a conversation of correction. Not to pick on them, not to beat them up, but let them know, here's what the Bible says. And so this is why this is appropriate behavior and why this is inappropriate behavior. And, 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 and you know, whatever it happens to be, we, we kind of go through it. It doesn't matter what. And sometimes, you know, when we're chasing, uh, what happens is a lot of people, they huff and they grab and say, I'm going to take my ball and bat and I'm going to go home. I'm not coming here anymore. But I'm not seeing that in Plaid. Most of the people of Plaid 
they're growing in the Lord and they're saying, oh, I never knew that that was a sin or I never knew that was wrong or, or I'm going to try harder next time. Uh, um, and, and a lot of times, you know, uh, uh, through the chastening, what happens is, is it grows in their faith because God convicts them on things. Sometimes I may tell them something and I'm the pastor, so a lot of times they don't respond to me the way they're really feeling, all right? But I'm sure that there's times that they're saying, uh, who does he think he is? Or, or, you know, boy, I can't believe he, he, got, he picked on me that way or whatever the case was. But then, but then they dwell on it, and the Holy Spirit talks to them, and they realize that it's done in love, and, and that we, all I care about is, is their eternal salvation, is their spiritual growth and their spiritual walk. And so through the course of that, okay, they get a conviction and it changes behaviors. This is what was happening in Paul's case with the church of Corinth. And it was changing behaviors. And let me tell you what, when that happens with the people of, uh, of Plaid and I watch them grow, I, I get so proud I can burst. I get so proud of them because they are they're, they're really focusing on what it is to grow closer to Jesus. And they're growing spiritually. And, and I'm, it's like being a parent, just watching your kid. You're so proud of them when they do something special. And that's the way Paul felt about the church. He, he was so proud of the way they handled themselves. He was so proud that they were able to take that chastening as mature Christians and not only just take it and realize what he said, but be able to move forward from it to be able to grow in their walk. And it's the same thing here at Plaid when that happens. So praise Jesus. I, I, I love to hear these, these verses. So anyway, we're just going to finish up today. We're going to move into chapter 8 tomorrow. But don't forget, don't forget, 1030 here, uh, we will be having service. And of course, we're always live at 5. Father God, we thank you. We thank you so much. And Lord God, I look and I see these, these verses and I, I can understand the pride that Paul had where he had brought people into the faith, Lord God, that you had instructed him uh, who to talk to and, and those that were led to salvation. And he watched them grow spiritually. And Lord God, uh, how proud, how proud he would have been of them. Alrighty, and I see that all the time here too, and I am so proud of the people of Platt, their faith, their forgiveness, their mercy, and their love for each other, and their love for me. I'm so proud of it, Lord God, and I would ask that you would continue to bless each and every one of them, that they keep growing closer and closer to you, that they understand that that uh, uh, the this walk that you have given us is the greatest walk of all, uh, this practicing righteousness blesses us so much and it lets us, allows us to grow closer to you. I ask that you bless everybody listening. And I'd ask you bless the services today, both of them. And Lord God, that eyes would be open and hearts would be touched and you, Lord Jesus, would be glorified. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'll see you later today. God bless you all.